The basic treatments for rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis come at it from very different angles. I think the key phrase for rheumatoid arthritis would be to control, shorthand here, control and reduce inflammation. Remember this is an autoimmune disease, so the inflammation comes from our own immune system attacking the body. So if we can temper down this, oops, that's not a parenthesis. If we can temper down this inflammation, then we really get to the source of the problem. But of course we treat the symptoms of pain as well. And on this side for osteoarthritis, which is a wear and tear degeneration of the cartilage, our dogma here is gonna be pain control. Pain control. This is a bonus we want to work on um, health in general, the general state of health and increasing the function and decreasing the symptoms. Okay, under these very different umbrellas, we can look at one at a time. On the rheumatoid arthritis side, we have a class of drugs called, it's conveniently named, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. So disease, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a long name, disease-modifying. So this tells you that it not only treats the symptoms, but it also modifies the process, the progression of the disease on the joint. So modifying anti-rheumatic, because when these were first produced, they were used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. But today, they're actually used to treat all kinds of autoimmune diseases as well. So I want to point out that there are many different kinds of drugs that fall under this category. I'm just going to put different X's instead of the names. And the fact that they all have different mechanisms. So they don't actually attack the or try to temper down the inflammation at the same place. And what puts them together is the fact that they not only treat the immune system or decrease the inflammation, but this disease modifying part tells us that this group of drugs decreases joint damage. As you can see, a lot of the therapies surrounding arthritis goes to the uh, symptoms of pain and function. But this one actually decreases and slows down the distortion of the joint. So there's disease modifying decrease of inflammation, but then there's also just good old anti-inflammatory drugs that decreases the inflammation in the body as a whole. So it might not target the specific ways that the joint is damaged, therefore it's not disease modifying. But it also works in terms of getting the inflammation markers down. So we have our good old steroids. They can be taken by mouth. What steroids do is that in the inflammation pathway, where A leads to B, leads to C, all the way to different infl inflammation markers, stero steroids comes in in the middle of this pathway and just stops it. So this is effective, but it's not specific, and it does not decrease joint damage, like the DMARDs do. And of course there are NSAIDs. This is your ibuprofen, your over-the-counter pain control. So they are effective in controlling the pain, but they also do decrease the inflammation as well. So these are the first line soldiers fighting the war. Um, the steroids and NSAIDs might be on a case-to-case -case backup basis. And then there's just pain control. All the different traditional ways of controlling pain can be applied here as well. But hopefully with these two drugs, we don't need too many additional painkillers. So just a side note really quick here about side effects. If you look at these drugs, they're anti-inflammatory as in they decrease the immune system. So decreasing the immune system is great for autoimmune symptoms, but they also just decrease our body's defense as well. So sometimes these drugs like steroids or some of the disease modifying drugs can make a person more susceptible to common things like a cold. And it might have to be stopped temporarily when they have some sort of other illness that we have to treat first and activate the immune system for. So it can be a tug of war. Just keep in mind the side effect in the back of your mind. So we come here on the OA side, pain control health. Remember the demographics here are people that tend to be elderly, overused joints, or they're carrying extra weight. So lifestyle here is going to be number one. Number one is in the first thing to try and the last thing to stop trying. So we have diet, exercise, whatever it, it takes for weight loss. Being at a healthy weight really decreases the strain on our joints. Weight loss. But of course, if you're not overweight to begin with, then a lot of the OA probably couldn't be attributed to that. So weight loss in the case of extra weight exacerbating the arthritis. 
There's physical therapy, people to teach you how to use your joints correctly so as to not damage them more. But also building up muscles because a lot of times when your joints hurt, people stop using that joint or that limb and the muscle can go into, can go into what we call atrophy or they shrink and they become not as effective. So PT, physical therapy, and getting muscle training using the joint correctly can actually decrease the strain on that joint when the muscle is strong. So physical therapy can stop people from spiraling into this bad cycle of my joints hurt so I don't use my muscles so my joints hurt more because my muscles are not working. Now on this side we also have the NSAIDs. And actually because this is kind of people might need to take it for a long time, um, acetaminophen, what we think of as Tylenol, is also used and can be used first line for more, less severe symptoms. Because this is bad for, for example, GI side effects, side effects. The acetaminophen does not hurt the gut in the same way. So these are both over the counter and they treat pain. But since we know over here that they're also anti-inflammatory, there's going to be local inflammation in the joint from osteoarthritis. So this is also a good way of just keeping the area under control. Since the pain is so localized here, usually to this specific joint, and it's not global like in rheumatoid arthritis, we can do injections into the joint. It can be a very good release of pain. And these can be steroid injections. So if your shoulder hurts, they can inject the steroid right into the shoulder. And steroids, we know from here, also decrease inflammation in the area. They can also inject analgesics. Analgesics. So deliver the pain control right to the area. I just realized my color coding is off here. I should have used white for these. So let me put some white dashes, but you get the idea here. And then, of course, at the end, we can also think about surgery. I'm going to put it kind of in, in the middle because technically you can do surgery for both sides. We don't want to get to this point, but sometimes when the damage is too great, we may need to replace the joint. It involves some risk and a lot of recovery, so we don't want to do this for first line. In fact, they don't want to do this in young people because the joint they put in will fail too after a while. So if you put it in someone who is 30, they're going to have to keep getting joint replacements. So we try to prolong their function and decrease their symptoms so that they don't get to surgery, or if they do, it will be later on.